A couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about uh, the truth of God's Word. And we were talking about how, how many Christians, people that say they believe in Jesus and, and dedicated their lives, are falling away. And we were talking about how what, what happens is these lies that are coming across telling us who God is and who God isn't. And who Jesus is and who Jesus isn't. And how Christians are somehow, for whatever reason, a certain percentage of them are pulling away and listening to these lies. So we were really focusing on trying to stay uh, fast in, in God's word and not be pulled away by false prophets. Um, so I'm going to reread something for you again. Uh, Matthew 24, 3, 14. Um, Jesus had been in the temple and was telling his disciples about the last days and what was going to happen. Um, so later on, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came up to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Um, Jesus had told them, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah, but they will deceive many. Um, and then Jesus also talked about this, some signs of the end times, you know, wars and rumors of war, wars and earthquakes and famines. And, and does any of that sound familiar to what's going on? That's kind of scary. But what we want to do is I want to focus on today is not just listening to these lies, but making sure that when we talk, that we're telling the truth, that we're not letting these lies kind of get into our heart and infiltrate us. And suddenly we start believing these lies and we start spouting off things that just are not true according to God's word. So we want to make sure that we're one of those people who don't, that we make sure that we don't become one of those people that are led away from the truth of God. We need to fill ourselves with the truth of God so much, his word so much, that we just run away from the lies and there's no room for that mistruth in our hearts. Amen? So uh, today I'm going to lay the foundation down with just three verses. And I was talking to Pastor Rick earlier and he was saying, well, you know, what programs do we use on on?" on the internet and with our Bible to find all these scriptures and make sure that we're accurate. Um, I was telling about a website and I, I was looking and studying all these Bible verses and going through my Bible of everything I remembered and everything I learned. And I found at least 105 Bible verses that had to do with lying and being deceived. And that was just a minimum. I mean, I could have done a sub-search and found probably another couple of hundred more about truth and, and not being deceived. But I'm going to give you three verses. I'm going to read them first, and later on we're going to break them down. First John, okay, first. John 8, 31 to 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Somehow the King James sounds cooler. It goes, and the truth shall set you free. You just, you kind of get that thing going there. Colossians 3, 9 through 10. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. deeds. Put on your new nature and being renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. I like that. That's the new creation thing. When we go to Christ, we don't have to hand on to our past anymore. And then the last one is going to be Psalms 44, 21. Would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. And that's going to be a big one. I like that one. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, first of all, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that the people here will hear your, your word, Lord, and that we'll apply it to our hearts and apply it to our words, our actions, and our deeds. And I thank you for any opportunity we have, Lord, to come before you with brothers and sisters and, and just listen to your word and just worship and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God knew that not being truthful was almost basically the foundation of everything that was evil. Uh, lies and, and the truth. And he included it, obviously, in the Ten Commandments. Does anybody remember what or which commandment it is? What number it is? Okay, I had to look it up too. Uh, the Ninth Commandment. Exodus twenty sixteen, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Something happened to me about ten days ago. Some of you guys know, and I'm going to share it because it really just has been sticking in my head. I was in Sacramento and we were in a company car and uh, this girl was driving that works with me and we were at a stoplight and we were right in front of the semi in Watt Avenue in Sacramento. It's kind of a, a tough area, lots of traffic. And uh, we're just sitting there talking, you know, at the, we're stopped in front of the semi and all of a sudden we never heard brakes or anything, just bam, this Ford Explorer ran into the back of us going about 35 miles an hour without stopping. 
Um, and that pushed us into the semi. And then, unfortunately, there was a lady behind that Ford Explorer that, you know, was misled because she wasn't looking ahead, but she rammed in the back of the Ford Explorer that gave us a third hit, which rammed us back into the semi, which gave us a fourth hit. So for a couple of seconds, we were just kind of bouncing around in this cab of the car. And uh, thank goodness I didn't take my little Prius. We actually took a little mini uh, SUV, a Ford Tracker, something. Um, so the first thing I said was my head, you know, I just, my head had hit the dash. I had a slight concussion. The ambulance came and everything it was kind of... Kind of scary. Um, my coworker, she's messed up a little bit with her neck, and I feel like somebody punched me in the in the back a couple of places. Um, but thank goodness, all the headaches went away and stuff. And uh, so this is what happened. I looked at my coworker and I said, "Wow, we just got hit." And she says, "No, we just got hit like three, four times." And because uh, we kept hearing, you know, crunch and then pow and crunch, and it's like it wasn't going to end. So here's the weird thing that happened. The lady that had hit us that we never heard breaks, never heard him at all, she gets out of her car and goes, really loud, and I could hear her in the car, and I was still in the cab. She goes, can you believe that that lady slammed into me and pushed me into your car? And, uh, you know, we, we got out of our car, we sat on the curb, and she was really loud, just going, I, I had my foot on the brake the whole time. This lady just hit me and just pushed me right into you guys. Are you guys okay? You know, we're sitting there. And, uh, and when the police officer arrived shortly, I heard her talking to the police officer. And right before the police officer had walked up to her, she was still saying, I can't believe. Look at my car. She pushed me right into you. I had my foot on the brake. So the cop asked her, what happened? And she says, well, I, that lady hit me and slammed me right into these people. The lies coming out of her were just unbelievable. And the cop asked her, the police officer asked her, well, you know, do you have your license? And she says, well, here's the thing. My license is suspended. And he says, well, then, okay, can I see your vehicle registration and insurance? And she says, well, here's the thing. I just got that vehicle this morning and I haven't registered yet or got insurance on it. And then she kind of continued to tell him all these things that were going on in her life. She didn't have time to do things. And you can start hearing some of the backpedaling. But the thing is, she's still stuck to that truth or that mistruth. Basically lying to the police officer saying that she got hit and then pushed us into her or pushed her into us. I used to tell my kids when they were younger, I'd say, um, don't lie. If you do something wrong, just all your boldness and strength and take the responsibility and come up to me and say, hey, Dad, I messed up. Because dealing with that is going to be kind of tough, but at least, you know, you know what you're dealing with. When, you know, something would happen and I'd walk in, okay, who did this? And they'd say, I don't know, no, not me. I, I, we don't know how it happened. Not only do I have to deal with the fact that something happened that they did wrong, but now we have to deal with the fact that they lied. So it just compounds the problems and just makes things worse. So this lady had lied and we went up to the police officer after, afterwards and we said, you know, here's what happened. The good news is I was sitting there and they were kind of putting us into the ambulance. They, um, um, I heard this witness talking to the officer saying, here's what happened. She never even stopped. She never hit the brake. She just slammed right into him and unfortunately behind them. So he was telling the truth. It's amazing when you hear a truth and you hear a lie, the reactions that you go through. So why do we lie? What happened? So I started looking and I started reading, okay, well, God associates lying with the enemy, Satan, from the very beginning. The Bible is really clear that lying is a sin and it's really displeasing to God. The first sin in this world was pretty much a lie and it involved Adam and Eve. Um, if you don't know the story, I'll go through this. In Genesis, the story of Adam and Eve, they're in the Garden of Eden. That tells where Satan basically deceived Eve and told her that they wouldn't surely die if they ate the, ate, the, ate the fruit that God told them not to eat. Genesis 3, 1, 19. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course, Eve said, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, just not the one in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. She was being deceived. 
Satan says, you won't die. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and and the fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and she ate it. Here's the really important part. Then she gave some to her husband, underlined, who was with her. And he ate it too. Has anybody ever kind of saw a story of Adam and Eve where she eats this apple and then she has to go and find Adam? Oh, look, you know, this, taste, this, you know taste this apple. That's so incorrect. He was standing right next to her and he did nothing. Adam was right there and that's a highlight for you. He heard the serpent and said nothing. He allowed Eve to listen and give in to Satan. At that moment, their eyes were open, and suddenly they felt shame at their nakedness, so they started sewing fig leaves together to cover themselves up. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walking through the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called the man and said, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walk in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. The Lord God asked, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, I can hear Adam going, no. (laughs) Kind of like my kids, right? Well, they're older now, but when they were little. (laughs) The man replied, it was the woman who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Talking about throwing Eve under the bus. (laughs) I mean, I'll read that one more time. The man replied, it was the woman you gave me. Who gave me the fruit and ate it. I mean, I was just standing there and she like forced it on me. And uh, what was I supposed to do? (laughs) Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? And the serpent, she said, the serpent deceived me. That's why I ate it. And then, you know, that if you don't know, I'll tell you real quick. The Lord laid out the punishments. He laid out the punishment to Satan. And he laid out the punishment to man and woman. Man would work hard and toil hard and... We talked about this yesterday, um, and women would go through intense labor pains, and it's it's a tough one. There's definitely repercussions and punishments that resulted from Adam and Eve disobeying God and listening to the lies of the enemy. So now, here's where I'll start. Let's break down these three verses I read. First one, John 8, 31 to 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's the highlight. So how are we free? When we tell the truth, there's three things that happen. First one is, we honor God and his commandment. We say, I want to please God. I want to do what he wants me to do. I want to be walking in truth. The second thing is, we don't bring harm to ourselves or others. We basically say, I want to treat others the way I want them to treat me. I don't want to disrespect people by giving them lies. And I don't want people to lie to me. And remember this, we reap what we sow. And the third thing is, the truth will set us free. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Giving our lives over to Jesus gives us this eternal freedom. And we are free indeed. The second verse was Colossians 3, 9 through 10. Don't lie to each other. You have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. We are to be like Jesus and treat others with love and respect. It could take a while for us to break those old bad habits. Maybe we've got a history. I I know, you know, big lies and even the little white ones that can just envelop us. So where do you start? You start with your words. Does anybody remember that movie Liar Liar with Jim Carrey? Yes. It's a funny movie. It's hilarious. And uh, I went back and was looking at some clips and I also was kind of sort of disappointed because there's a lot of scenes that, you know, it might have a word here and there or a, you know, a little implied something and I go, ah, oh, can't show any of those clips in church or anything. And, but I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to bring that up to you because I remember thinking of this clip, he could not tell a lie. He had to tell the truth. So I remember him walking to his office and walking down the hallway trying to avoid people. And people were asking him questions. And like the receptionist who had this, you know, 
crazy hair do right? And then she goes, hey, Fletcher, how do you like my new dress? And he's like, well, whatever takes the focus off that hairdo. <laughs> and some guy walked up to him and says, hey, Fletcher, what's up? And he says, your cholesterol. <laughs> Somebody else walked up and says, hey, Fletcher, how are you? He goes, you're not important enough for me to remember your name. That is not what God's talking about when he tells us <laughs> to speak honestly. So don't take that as gospel truth. Liar, liar. I do like that one part when he's trying to make the, tell that the blue pen is red. And he's on the ground and he's saying, oh, I admit it. You know, what's happening to me? And he, he tells himself, you're getting what you deserve. You're reaping what you sown. That was truth there. See, the point is, we need to speak in love. Truth in love. Truth doesn't have to come out rude or abrasive. We, we can tell people the truth and, and, and be in godly love. And that's something I'm working on because sometimes I get in these things where I may be speaking right things, but it comes out way too abrasive. And I'm still praying that over myself. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. That's out of the New King James. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translations. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. The third verse we talked about, Psalms 44, 21. Would God not discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Here's a highlight for you. See, that's the scary part. We think no one knows or will find out when we tell a lie. That is scary. Here's a real big highlight for you. We are more worried about people finding out that we're lying than we are concerned about God already knowing that we're lying. It's scary. Luke 8, through, uh, Luke 8, 17. For all that is secret will eventually be brought out into the open and everything that is concealed we brought to light and made known to all. When we turn our lives over to Jesus and we try to please God, definitely, from my beginning with my relationship with God and rededicating myself, I mean, lying was the very first thing that he identified in me that says, you've got to get rid of this stuff. The little white lies, anything that's going on, you've got to start speaking truth. You've got to start getting into the Word. And I started thinking about why do people lie most times? I think one of the first reasons why people lie is they're afraid they're going to get in trouble. They protect themselves. Like, you know, I've heard before, you know, well, if dad finds out, we're really going to get in trouble. So what are we going to tell him? Or has anybody ever said, you know, really, officer, I didn't think I was going that fast, you know. <laughs> and I never saw the stop sign. Uh, it must be new, you know. The other thing is, we, we tell lies sometimes to avoid what we think might hurt others. Like, yeah, honey, you look great in that dress. I really like it, you know, I really like that one. Or, yeah, honey, you're great, you're wonderful, you're fine, you know. Things. These little white lies that we tell each other. And sometimes it just becomes a bad habit. You know, things like, you know, maybe I'll just call in sick. Or uh, just tell them I'm not home. These little lies of a convenience. And sometimes the flat out truth is, some of us or some people just purposely deceive people. They lie and they don't care. It's just part of who they are. It's just taken over the nature. There's not enough of God's truth in their hearts where those lies are being pushed out. So why do we need to make sure that we are speaking truth? The Lord requires it of us. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Here's a highlight for you. Satan uses lies to break us down in hopes that believing the lies will push us farther away from God and His truth. He wants us, to go back to what we talked about two weeks ago, to pull away from the faith. I've seen so many people recently, it's kind of scary, I've seen people, for whatever reason, they listen to somebody, maybe they're reading too many books and not enough time reading the book. What you really need to do is just start reading the Word of God. You've got to start opening up the book and start figuring out what the truth is. When you get confused, read the Bible. Psalm 5, excuse me, 551, 6. 
Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. With truth comes wisdom and the ability to make the right decisions. But how do we learn the truth? It's the only one way to learn it. We've got to just go to God ourselves, one-on-one. -on -one. Open up the Bible, start reading, start asking God what this means. If you need somebody to help you read through it, great. Join a Bible study, you know, find a friend that's maybe spiritually mature, ask questions and do that research. But it's going to start right here with this word. One of the key reasons we need that to learn the truth and to speak truth is to live the truth. So in the final days, we don't get pulled away. I, like I said, I mean, I've known people very close to me that for whatever reason pulled away from the word and you don't see them anymore. I think perhaps Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, that says it really well. Let me read this to you and I'm almost done. I'll end with this. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave the church. He gave them apostles and prophets, the evangelists and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, which is the body of Christ. This will continue until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. And here's the important part. We won't be tossed and blown around and about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they will sound like truth. Instead, we will speak with truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. So the Word of God, I mean, our responsibility at Rock of Life is to teach and to preach and to help people get to know the truth more and more so that when you're out in the world, you know the difference between a lie and the truth. And I said this once before, and it's actually, I'm not the original one who said this. This is actually from a church, uh, another pastor that I heard. The people that would make sure that they could find, that work for the government to find counterfeit money, the real money versus the fake money, do you remember how everybody assumes that you had to be around the fake stuff? Well, actually what these, what these people do, they, they touch the real money over and over and over again. They touch it from the corner to corner. They look at it. They sense it. They feel it. So that when they come across a fake bill, they easily identify it. That's God's Word. And you have to know it. You have to feel it. Touch it. You have to read it. You have to live it. You've got to breathe it. So when something comes across, all of these little ding, 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 these deflectors come out. And you recognize that what you're hearing is a lie. And you won't be deceived. It's all about God's Word. So we dedicate ourselves to the truth of God's Word. We fill ourselves up in our hearts and our minds with more truth. And pretty soon there's not a room, there's no room for a single lie or false information. Jesus said in John 14, 6, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Here's the big part. And this, I'm going to end with this. Jesus expects the ones that love Him and give their lives to Him to be people of truth. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, I thank You so much. I thank You for Your Word. I thank You for it speaking to us, Lord, so we could breathe it in. And we keep it in our heart for when we need it, Lord. And that we just keep filling ourselves with Your truth so much. That there's no room, Lord, for false or things or anything deceptive, deceptive that the, uh, the enemy tries to give us. So that we do nothing but go stronger and stronger in your word every day. I thank you for that, Lord. I just want to give you praise and glory. And I pray for the truth to just fill up everyone's hearts that are here right now, Lord. I give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want you to know that uh, my Bible is bigger than his. Did you notice that? <laughs> Has to do with large print for eyes that are failing. <laughs> I can barely read it. <laughs> uh, would, would you all please rise? Let's just go to the Lord and, and close our service. We thank you. I know that Pastor Alfredo had inserts in the bulletin. If you did not get one, there are a slew of verses that you saw here, but also more of them. Um, and they would make great items for your Bible study during the week between times. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, we just thank you for the fellowship opportunity we've had today to be together at Rock of Life Fellowship. We thank you for each and every person that is here who made the attempt to come and be in your presence today. We thank you for the worship team and leading us in worship of you. We thank you for the message that Pastor Alfredo has delivered. Help us to be in the word between now and next service so that we really begin to know how to detect counterfeit, how, how to detect deception. The only way we'll be able to do that is to be in your word and to learn your truth. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today to be together. Help us to be mindful of each other. Help us to think and pray for each other in the weeks ahead. And now, as we prepare to leave Rock of Life Fellowship, may God richly bless you. May the light of his countenance shine upon you and give you grace, mercy, and peace, both now and forevermore. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, and all the believers said, Amen. 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 Go with God.